This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7 at Cary, Ohio for some barbecue and bingo. Again, OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday, 4 to 7 for some barbecue and bingo. Be sure to hit up his social media, Facebook and Twitter to find more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, you are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast, thank, <laughs> thanks for the moral support there, Hoosier. Uh, this episode of the Sloopcast brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, uh, Toledo-based, Perrysburg-based coffee company, uh, Marine veteran-owned. It is a company based on, built around the idea of integrity, both as a coffee company going back to their farmers as all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic, but also forward to you, the customer, where all of their beans are hand roasted, uh, hand, nose, eyes, ear, mouth, monitored, and making sure you're getting the freshest, highest quality coffee beans Integrity going in both directions, making sure everyone is taken care of. That's the type of service and that's the type of company you're working for when you buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. You can find your new favorite Iron Bean Coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I was going to say, how are you doing, YouTube? But I think we all kind of know how everybody's feeling (laughs) today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see we're already off to a positive start down in the in the show notes. They're jumping ahead of us on the grades. They are not being kind um, and are being, quite frankly, very honest. So, uh, Kyle, let's not let them get too far ahead of us. Let's let's get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I think I say this every time that after a Buckeye <laughs> after a Buckeye loss, Buckeye loss is I'm here. I'm here, Jared. I'm here. How about you? The sun came up, Kyle. Um, I have good news and I have bad news. Um, this is our very first as a Sloopcast. Ooh. Post, oh, Kyle just now made this connection. Uh, mm. This is this is our very first post Michigan loss episode of the Sloopcast, and I say that one because Kyle and I are in uncharted territories doing this for seven seasons now, and and here's a first for us. Um, we've been through coaching changes and coaching controversies and a lot of things, but this this sucks. Um, I say that to. Kind of emphasize how much Kyle and I kind of don't want to be doing the show right now and how thankful I am that uh, all of our sleep cats showed up down there in the live chat and that, that we aren't doing this alone. And I point that out to also point out that we that, that not everything is terrible. Not everything's terrible. The, the, it obviously sucks right now. And, you know, we will have we've had a lot of good years before and we're going to have a lot of good years ahead uh and hopefully we just treat this as a blip on the radar just as that one little speed bump of that uh sort of the the you know they were going to win one eventually this is their one that's fine now we pick the streak back up where we left it off and and we figure stuff out let me ask you this because um i think I think uh, Hoosier Buckeye um, mentioned this uh, in the in the chat here, um, and also Kabuto asked the question here. Considering the potential that this team had, rivalry streak, everything else, where does this loss in the modern history of Ohio State losses? Where does this rank? Um, it that's. It's not, it's not good. I, I legitimately, I, I said it before and I just said it last week. I say it again. I, I think this is, 
one of the top two teams in the country. I still think it. Um, uh, what what we had happen on Saturday, one, Michigan came in with an excellent game plan and they executed it. Like, they didn't make any mistakes outside of an interception that, that Shaw made a great jump on, maybe a little too aggressive of a play call by Josh Gaddis and Jim Harbaugh and the, and the Michigan folk. Um, maybe, like I said, maybe too aggressive of a play call, but outside of that, they, they didn't make any mistakes. And Hoosier, I am not even going to entertain that question. Uh, they, they made a bunch of, they, they didn't make any mistakes. And then you look on the other side of the ball and you had Ohio state who even little mistakes just over and over and over and over again, not getting the snap count, right. Whether it be a bad snap that led to a, a play that just got burned you know, CJ Stroud had to burn a couple plays by diving on a ball, by throwing a ball away because of bad snaps, because of other miscommunications between not being able to field the kickoff right. A couple a couple kicks. I think one of them maybe was a punt and another one or two. of Now, the, the punt ended up generating a 15 yard penalty or maybe was caused by the 15 yard penalty. But but even then, like a couple kickoffs were dropped, a couple passes were dropped. A stupid five yard penalties. Um, it was just, it was, it was just little mistake, little mistake, little mistake. It, it, it really, in many ways, felt like a death by a thousand paper cuts. You're yeah, facing I, I think, a, think... an incredibly talented team making no mistakes, and you seem to be making a mistake once a drive on each side of the ball. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that, that, that fit it right. I think that was the best description. Jared was <clears throat> just death by a thousand needles because it was Michigan didn't really have that many like long plays. I think they might have had one long play that I can really think of. There might have been a second one, but I can only remember like one that was a really long run by um, that Corum who had who had um I think it was like an over fifty yard rush there, but. Uh- no, there, there, there was a, there was, there was a couple more. There was, a, I think there was a couple long passes. Ohio State started selling out against the run, which left Burke in a true one-on-one situation. There, uh, yeah, you're right. There, um, there was that one. Okay, you're. And I you're think right. Haskins okay. broke but, but, a, a pretty long one as well. But outside, um, yeah, I see here. Um, Haskins' longest one was 27 yards. But okay, there, there was a, there was a couple. There was but a few. outside, af- after those three or four there, those plays, like it was like, like what you said, Jared, it was death by a thousand needles getting four, five, seven, eight yards, just easily on the ground there. And they, they averaged 7.2, 7.2 on the ground. And what was Ohio state's in this game? 2.1. That, and yeah. that's, that's considering with CJ uh, Stroud's sacks as well. If you take that out, you're still averaging, Around three a carry. Well, around Henderson, carry. Henderson himself only had four four, which mm-hmm. tells yeah. you what you need to know. Um, yeah, you know we've said it a thousand times on this show, and it was said a million times before we even had a podcast. Of course, it's it's an old cliche in football, but it's an old cliche that we keep repeating for a reason. Lost in the trenches. You want to win, you got to yeah. first but- win in the trench. And Ohio State lost. Both sides of the ball in the trenches. Period. So let's you, let's start right. So so, so you can let, you can be mad about play calling, and you can be mad about coaches, and you can be mad about whatever else you want. Fact of the matter is, Ohio State lost in the trenches on both sides of the ball, and it, it, at a certain point, it doesn't matter what play you're calling, offensively or defensively. It, it doesn't matter what scheme you come into the game with or try to adjust to. If you're not winning your one-on-one matchups in the trenches, you're going to lose. 100%. 100%, Jared. So let, let's start right there. Offensively, let's start with the offensive line. Let's grade, let's grade each position here. Offensive line, I, I don't know how you give anything else higher than higher than an F, honestly. This was, this was probably the worst that I've seen, that I've seen this 
this offensive line, who's supposed to be like one of the best offensive lines this year, and they they stunk it up. They they stunk it up. They allowed they allowed four sacks in this game, and they had nearly ten tackles for loss as well. Like it, it just the blocking wasn't there. And there's there's a there was uh, videos out there. I don't know if you've seen any of those where you see I have Hutchinson not been quite that masochistic. Where Hutchinson is just shoving our tackles to the ground, just straight up, just one on one, going right at him and just shoving him to the ground. Like it, it was just, it was embarrassing. This is, this is again one of the best offensive lines in the country is supposed to be, and they, they looked so inferior in this game. I don't know how you can get anything else. I don't think how you can give anything else other than an F for this for this offensive line. Yeah, and the. Yeah, Hutchinson dominated the game. Um, Ajabo also had a really good game. Um, the Michigan defensive tackles, I don't necessarily... Uh, they were doing their jobs by eating up blocks, and what you saw were the linebackers of Michigan doing what linebackers are supposed to do, which we haven't seen an Ohio State linebacker do uh, probably since Jerome Baker graduated, was like make a play behind the line of scrimmage and... Yeah, it's offensive line gets an F. There, there's no, there's no just grade other than that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, tight end, I'd, I'd, I'd have to also give like the tight end. Maybe I'll give the tight end a D minus, maybe an F too. Like they, same thing goes with the offensive line. The, the blocking from them was not up to par where they needed to be. Even if it was just, even if it was just a little chip. To give a little bit more time, it not not to the expectations we expected from from Ruckert and Stover from this um from this group of tight ends. Yeah, uh, I mean, where where was Ruckert? Like, uh, did he have a catch? He did. He had. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. I think he had a catch. He literally had one catch. Um, um, actually, and, no, he didn't. No, he did not. He did not record a catch. I think he had a target, but did not get a catch. So no, zero catches by the tight ends here. So yeah. So yeah. That's, that's I noticed that too, Austin. For me. Uh, Austin points out that Silver also got time at linebacker this game. He didn't. Why? He didn't. I assume maybe because of injuries and player unavailability at linebacker. Um, there was. I know Neo Teote yep. missed another game. I presume that's why I, I don't know, but the run game didn't work. The tight ends didn't get involved in the passing game. They were a non-factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's yep. it. F, F, F for the tight ends too. wide receivers. Let's move on to the wide receivers here, Jared. It's hard I'm... to grade the wide receivers. I would say in many ways, I, I think that um, JSN had a, had a good game. Um, I thought Wilson had a couple really nice catches, but the, the passing game in general felt really, really off if it, and I would say once again, that started with the offensive line in many ways. Um, mm -hmm. I, it's hard to put any blame on the wide receivers here. Cause I feel like when Stroud had a clean pocket, he was completing pat like Stroud had a good game. Like, I feel like we're just handing out F's over here. I thought Stroud had a good game. And I thought yeah. the wide receivers had a good game. Um, yeah, un would, unfortunately, actually... they didn't. When when the pocket was clean, mm -hmm. it was it was there. Yeah, I, I was going to give the wide receivers like a B B minus because I, I thought overall they did better than average. They 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 had twenty eight catches between the three of them for what is that three hundred yards over yeah about 300 yards for the what? game there. And that's, that's what you want out of your, your well, top I, three I would, I would receivers. ask why a B minus then I feel like we, we it, can't it, do, we can't, we, we can't just go full negativity here and start handing so, out subpar grades because a lot, of, a lot of it is expectations too, from this, from this wide receiver group here. And there were drops, there were drops and critical drops too. at times. Right. I'm not saying so, they should get an a plus, but at the same time, I, I, I don't, I just don't want to, I don't, I don't want to go like overwhelmingly negative here just because no. we lost. I don't feel like there's any blame, not 
not not to say any blame because as you said there were drops but yeah. and 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 based on my expectations and seeing the drops there i again most of it is just expectations what we come to seeing all this year from these wide receivers it's it just didn't seem like themselves which is why i gave a b it's good grade but it's not it's not like the kind of grade we would give out like when they played michigan state right but it's football all of the systems have to work together yeah and i i don't feel like all of this i I mean, I feel like we could maybe compromise and go B plus here. I, I think it should be more like an A minus. Um, so yeah. if that's right. if that's good with you, All right. B B plus is fine there. All right, well, Hold you, it back you here. put it for the wide receivers, or you put it for the running oh, yes, backs. Not yes, the wide I'm, receivers I'm sorry. Yep, notes. wide receivers. Yes. All right. Sorry. Uh, running backs. Um, uh, Henderson. Uh, first off, the offensive line. Like, what what. What else can we do other than just kind of shrug and say the offensive line? If the offensive line doesn't work, the rest of the offense doesn't work. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with Henderson and Mayan Williams' lack of productivity. Also, Ohio State got down early. Ohio State got down early. So much the same way that Ohio State took Walker out of the Michigan State game, Michigan took Henderson out of, the, out of this game. Um, now... Also, it just wasn't being productive. Like, Ohio State came out first drive of the second half, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, and punted. I, and I, I people got mad about that, and I, and I understand why, because in retrospect, it looks like a terrible set of play calls, right? But I, I think Ryan Day challenged his offensive line to go out there and win some battles, to go out there and set the tone. And they failed. And, and I'm not I'm not saying Henderson's blameless in all of this. I feel like he tried to break a couple plays. I feel like he got desperate and tried to break a couple plays outside when he should have been following the scheme and following the blocks. Um, I, I I think he was trying to make something happen that wasn't there on several occasions. Um, they they. On on occasion they were Austin, um, not to say it, it wasn't always bad, and there there were occasions in which I I saw him, I saw him pass on cutting up in an effort to continue to string out, and I I'm not saying I don't get it. Maybe it was him just doing his damnedest to try and make something happen. Yeah. Michigan Bucknut backing me up on that one. Um, I, you know what I mean? He's a freshman trying to, who's used to being able to impact and take over a game who was trying to do that. And yep. I, I, I don't put a ton of blame on him for that. But the fact of the matter is, is that he was passing on five, six yard plays and getting one or two yards. Cause he was trying to break them outside when Ohio state yep. really needed those and again, so, I get it. The mentality, I get it. Um, to go along with everything that you said there, Jared, a lot of it had to do with the offensive line and how they played, which affects how the yardage that Henderson and to a degree, mine Williams too. It is hard to grade the running back here because of that play, but I, we got to give them a, a grade here. And I was thinking like a B minus C plus range around there. I think I think Which I think I is think fair. That yeah, either I'm I'm okay with either one of those, Kyle. Okay. All right. And then the last one here, the quarterback play. Now, there's a lot of people and probably the same people after the game or even during the game. Hey, hey Michigan Bucknut, can you go ahead and throw that question into the into the ask sloopcast so we don't so I can come back to it? A lot of people ripping on CJ Stroud saying CJ lost the game and no. and this and that and blah 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 and those are probably the same people who were against him all the, year at the yep against him all year just turn turn their backs on him in, in this game here CJ Stroud in this game thirty four again with drops and the amount of time he had in the pocket. 34 for 49, which is 69% completion, 
completion. Nice. L- listen, it's I know, I know, I know, I know the episode we're doing here. If you think I'm going to pass on saying nice, there you're you not watched this, Three, not watched or listened to this podcast long enough. Three hundred and ninety four yards, two touchdowns, zero turnovers in that game. And considering the 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 rush that was, on, but this is the this is the worst pass rush he's faced in his entire college career. Maybe and never. I felt like he handled it with an incredible amount of poise and not throwing interceptions, not losing the ball once on a fumble. By the way, he finally ran he finally ran for that um he finally ran for that touchdown that everyone's been asking him to run for. Um and he looked good doing it. He looked yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, and it, it unfortunately got called back. Uh they they still ended up getting a touchdown on that drive though, didn't they? Mm-hmm. So yeah, they did. Yes. Yeah. They did. I mean, it, I, I, it, it is, I, it I is, really, I, 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 really I, want... I thought CJ Stroud had a great game, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, would, I, I think this is probably the only position where, um, where a position actually gets an A rating and I'd give him an A minus here. I thought Stroud played very well in this game. Uh, yeah, he had the two fumbles, but he recovered them. Um, now there's some reports about him being sick and had a hard time audibling and um, trying to talk to his team, which could affect, but I'm not here to try to make excuses or anything, but I, I would I almost, thought, I thought he played, I thought he played really well. I would almost say that that had something to do with all of the false starts, except that we saw that at times that all the season very first play or even the very first offensive snap. Oh yeah, but I'm also just saying we saw we saw that happen to Ohio State on the road a couple times this year. So I'm not, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so the ratings we have here again: offensive line, tight end, uh, Michigan Buckner. I understand that he he took the blame for those, but that's that's what he should do publicly. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what a leader does. Uh, offensive line, tight ends, straight F. Wide receivers got a B plus. Running back got a C plus, and C.J. Stroud got an A minus here. I'm good with that. Uh, Kyle, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're over on the ad break. Let's do that. Sure thing. Why don't you kick us off with the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Jared? Sure thing. The Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, um, we're going to talk a little bit about some flavors here. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little dark. So let's, let's look at the dark roast. Um, let's go to all the coffees. All right. Let's look at the fierce. Then let's take a look at the Odin, and then I don't know, we'll just look at those two. So first we have the Fierce. The Fierce is a highly caffeinated dark roast coffee uh, available in whole bean and ground, like all of the Iron Bean coffees are. A revolutionary blend of Robusta and award-winning Arabica coffees that will wake up your taste buds and fire up your inner rebel uh, for to 700 milligrams per serving that's caffeine um a ratio and brew method dependent so it, it, it depends but if anyone's telling you oh you this much caffeine per cup they don't actually know that that's an average it depends upon how you brew it so they're just being honest with you here Iron Beans Fierce Dark Roast Coffee made with 100% specialty coffee beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay your day uh let's take a look at the Odin um Drink coffee like a Viking. Organic Ugandan volcanic soils feed the fire in this single origin dark roast. Uh, The Odin coffee will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. Kyle, we got a sun card in the chat. I wanted to point that out. Um, you, You were saying he was like the one person missing from the gang. So there he is. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the Odin. And of course, if you want a lighter version of the Odin, there's always the Thor and the Loki as well. Uh, so if you want to find your new favorite coffee, you all, you have to do is go over to ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who will be in Cary this Thursday at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria, four to seven for some barbecue and bingo. Um, let me add you a, let me read you, Jared, a, a review from someone who had 
some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, they, they mentioned here, picked up some brisket and cold pork meals for lunch. Uh, all, all truly enjoyed their food. Uh, we both ordered both kinds of sauce on the side. And, um, and after one taste, we didn't have even opened the Sweet Baby Ray's containers, used the Kerry Floodwater sauce, and it was delicious. The sauce is fantastic. A couple of us um, who, do, who don't even like baked beans tried, tried their second place beans and were outstanding. Uh, definitely check, out, check him out and absolutely recommend their food to our family and friends. Yum. Um, be, the, be the next review by checking him out this Thursday, 4 to 7, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria, again, for some barbecue and bingo, and be sure to hit up his social media to find out more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, All right. defense. Defense, and let's, kind of like the offense here, let's start with the, let's start with that defensive line. F. I'm sorry. Like what? What else? What else is there to say? Michigan yep. ran the ball at will. Ohio yep, State needed ran. just like a stop, a single stop. All, and, all, and they, yeah, and they couldn't. They they couldn't. The last the last five full drives for Michigan all resulted in touchdowns. Going back to their last full drive in the in the first half, and all four full drives in the second half all resulted in touchdowns here. Almost 300 rushing yards here. And the defensive line, zero sacks and zero tackles for loss in this game. Straight F. Straight F, and you might as well give that straight F to that linebackers as well, too. Yeah, what what else is there to say? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe a D minus, maybe a D. Um, I really don't feel like... No, no, you're right. Give, they need to be able to get off blocks. I, I saw, mm -hmm. and no matter who the linebacker was, by the way, there were several linebackers in there. I'm not singling anyone out. I saw linebackers eating up blocks instead of attempting to beat blocks, which is, I think, what I see from this Ohio State defense when they're playing a good opponent. If they can't outrun the blocks, they're screwed. If they can't outrun the blocks, they're screwed. If they actually have to hit someone and beat them if they actually have to impact an offensive player and shed the block they struggle and they struggle hard against the weaker opponents it doesn't show up so much because they can just sort of run their way around those guys or they can beat the blocks against weaker opponents because they're just not as good but against stronger opponents you know they can they can they can sit there and stand there and they can eat up a block, but they're not beating the block with near enough frequency. Um, so yeah, F. Yep. All right, D, all right. Cornerbacks here, kind of mixed with the corners here because I thought overall they did, I thought they did pretty decent. I know that I know that there were a couple of long passes. Uh, I think there was a total of three plays that went for over 30 yards. But other than that, they didn't really let up too much more after that. They, they, they held Michigan to under 200 passing yards, which I think is below average for this, for this defense. And they, they ended up getting a pick, which actually that was the safety, but I thought overall they did, they did pretty well. Uh, so I'd, I'd probably give the corners maybe like a, just a C maybe. Maybe like a C, C, yeah, I would probably I, say like a C. I have to disagree. Um, Austin in the chat, I think, is saying more along the lines of what I was thinking. Uh, he says, well, they weren't really tested in this game, uh, which is true. McNamara only threw the ball 19 times. So you say they didn't get many yards. Well, McNamara still averaged 8.4 per attempt. The total yardage doesn't tell the whole story there because Michigan was able to run on Ohio State so easily. Like, why bother? Um, he says, and when they were tested, they lost. And, like, Kyle and I are, are Gold Star members of the Denzel Burke fan club. We love Denzel Burke. 
He's the next great cornerback at Ohio State. He's tremendous. He has an amazing future. He played as a true freshman and was immediately the best cornerback on the team. We are in the Denzel Burke fan club. I adore him. He had a bad game. He got he got put into some one-on-one situations and he had a bad game. He's a true freshman. And he had a bad game early in the season. He had a bad game now. He was rock solid everywhere in between. He's tremendous. I adore him. He has an amazing future at Ohio State. I, I don't. I really don't want to this to come across like me ripping him. But the fact of the matter is, is that he had a bad game. Um, I, you, I think, you had one. Yeah, I, I, I think. Yeah, I, he's. I mean, yeah, you can you could you could clear you can classify this as a bad game, but it's still I thought he played decent in this game, but for what but for what we're used to seeing from Burke, this is this was his worst game he's played at Ohio State. But he and will be, good... by the way. I'll I'll go ahead and throw this this will be when he when it's all said and done, this will be his worst game at Ohio State. It doesn't mm-hmm. get worse. It only gets better from here. Okay, so all right, so maybe a C minus then. I think for a C minus for I I I think you're being generous, but we yeah. can move forward. I'm not going to fight about it. All right, and the safeties here. Now the safeties here. They they did get the one turnover for the game here, which was huge, by the way. Like, in retrospect. Maybe it doesn't feel as huge, but in that moment, it kept the game close at halftime. It kept Ohio State in the game. It allowed Ohio State to still have their full playbook when maybe they would have had to been desperate and start throwing the ball earlier in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I I thought it was, I you know, and we've not necessarily been the biggest Bryson Shaw fans on this show, but that was a great, great that was a great play. Yep, he that that was his his play. That that was the biggest play for this defense. It was without question the biggest play on the, for this defense. It's a small hurdle and, to hurdle, but but then as as the game went on, you start seeing the same Shaw that we saw before, and I I don't want to be a broken record because everybody's ripping on Shaw, but we we've seen it week in and week out, just bad angles, bad cuts to get into the play, get into the runner, and yeah, it's it's tough, but I I probably give the same as the the corners, probably a C minus as well, with the fact that they did get the turn the one turnover in the game. Uh forgive me if I mispronounce this name, but we have some uh breaking news for us. It won't be breaking news for the people listening. Uh Brandon Ennis I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Just decommitted from Oklahoma uh, on on the back of the Lincoln Riley news. Mm-hmm. Um, I Man, know Ohio it, State it, was was in on him early, but I feel like Ohio State's wide receiver class for this class is is already kind of crowded. Now you would make you would make room for Ennis. Don't get me wrong. Um, you would make room for him because he's that good. I just don't know if that's what Ennis wants. Yeah, it's no, I no, yeah, Austin. But... I agree with you. Ohio State can, should, will attempt to go after him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just don't and know if that's can... what's best for Ennis. In fact, part of me thinks he just ends up following to USC. Yeah, All right. we we can we can say this for another episode. Yeah, we still and have... we will. We still have more to, to get to here, Jared. A lot, lot more, but yes. Um, and that's just my initial possibly, instinct. Possibly, I know nothing. Yep, possibly good news for Ohio State, but maybe he'll follow Lincoln where he's going. Maybe, but we'll, we'll, move, we'll, move, on, we'll move on here to the special teams, Jared. No, they did not get a a, uh, a touchdown in this game either, Jared. <laughs> so, right. no, they don't get an A+. Plus. Um, I, I guess... I'm gonna guess like a, I'm gonna say like a B minus only only because of the coverage and some of the dropped um what do you call them I guess returns recept, not recept, returns yeah some of the thank you some of the dropped returns because there was two of them in this game I yeah I, I think a B minus 
for for the special teams here. Um, I I think that's kind of generous. Again, I don't think the coverage was good. I don't think they were fielding the ball well. Um, no struggle. Ruggle didn't struggle and 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 got got his points. Um, I don't feel like they punted particularly well. I don't know. I just I don't see any positives here Mer- other than Mer- not missing a field goal. Yeah, Mirko Mirko did his typical. He he's averaging he averages right around forty five yards, which is which is what he did in this game. But it was it was the return yardage from the kickoffs where they were averaging seventeen per, which is a lot more than what Ohio State is used to doing. So yeah, I'd. I'm going to stick with B minus just because Ruggles did go perfect and okay. Mar- and Marco I formally did, disagree. Did his job. Okay. And I formally well, disagree. Okay. All right, and coaching, Jared. Okay. Um this is, right, this I, is... I, th- I, th- I think every I think everyone agrees what um no, we're not giving that letter, Stuart. Uh, <laughs> um I think everyone agrees with the rating for this um, for this coaching staff, <laughs> Zach's a Z. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's an to me to me I, it, it's got to be an F, just because of I don't I don't know even where to start. I mean it I mean it starts with the preparation for the offensive line, defensive line. What you're going to do with Hutchinson? I didn't. Ex- I was a little surprised to see how impactful Hutchinson was in this game, knowing that, hey, maybe you put a tight end on that side to slow him down, just like what every other team does whenever Ohio State had had a Bosa or had a Young. But we didn't really get to see that. I, I really did not see it that often here. It's, I just felt like, and there wasn't really much coaching changes in the second half here. You know, Jared mentioned about, oh hey, let's let's run it on our first drive and assert our dominance, and it wasn't there. I an F. It it's got to be an F. Yeah. Um. Ah, uh, it's it is. I mean, we we've told you we've told you since October that the the coaching was just never going to be that the defense was just never going to be what it needed to be. Matt Barnes was given, I've said it a thousand times, Matt Barnes was given an impossible task, and I thought went as well as it could have done. But in situations this year in which Ohio State went up against a really schematically talented offensive coordinator, they got they got torched. It's Whenever Ohio State went up against a really good offensive coordinator, they got out-schemed. And they got worked. And um, it's, it is what it is. Like, Matt Barnes did the best he could with what was was given to him, which was trying to completely rework a defense in the middle of the season. Um, the, the defensive coaching staff is going to get gutted. Like, the defensive coaching staff is going to get gutted this offseason. And... It'll it'll be what it'll be. It's it's. Yeah. I really don't necessarily even have a ton of negatives to say about the offensive coaching staff outside of Coach Stud, and I feel like maybe it maybe it is time to make a change there. This offensive line was too. He doesn't recruit well enough. We've known that for years, and as far as this is an incredibly talented offensive line. And they didn't put it together. And what we've always sort of defended about Coach Stud was, yeah, he doesn't get the best guys, but he always puts a great product on the field. And considering the incredible amount of talent Ohio State had at their disposal along the offensive line this year, they didn't meet that potential. And I understand he had health issues during the offseason, and I understand all of that, but... Um, I think I think it's it's time to make a change there, and I think unless you're Larry Johnson or Matt Barnes, 
I think it's probably time to probably to to gut the defensive coaching staff as well. I again, I know Matt Barnes because he was the defensive coordinator and because the defense was and he's not, by the way, just he was the play caller. He was not the defensive coordinator. Again, man was given an impossible task. I have no hate for Matt what, Barnes, but what about Al, what about Al Washington? Well, if the linebackers improved, have the linebacker he was supposed to come in here and fix the linebackers? Has he? I'll wait. If you, if, if the so linebacker has so been fixed. Coach, if you were the coach, Jared, would you keep, would you keep Stud in Washington? No. Or would you let them one or both go? I I think that both of them are going to find wonderful opportunities somewhere this off season. No one's going to get fired. I don't believe, but a lot of people are going to find really nice opportunities elsewhere this off season. All right. All right, Jared, let's let's answer some of the questions here. I know you kind of hinted at Michigan Bucknut asking about um, Coach Stud and Coach Washington, but also ask about Coach Larry Johnson. Is he losing is he losing his touch here? In inability to generate a pass rush and no, not a lot of penetration to disrupt the run game was alarming. And yeah, uh, no, he, ab- absolutely. He was not he's not um He's not beyond criticism here. Uh, the defensive line did not play as well as they should. Um, you you do also have to consider that, one, he does recruit maybe better than anyone else ever. And sometimes players just don't pan out the way you expect them to. And sometimes your guys are dependent upon the scheme that the coordinators are running behind them. And... Yeah. I, it's 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 Larry Johnson. What do you want me to say? I think that the man I, has earned his right I, to. Yeah, I th- I think you you keep him there. He keep him he's to... earned benefit of the doubt, whereas yeah, you, other guys you, on you the defensive him... staff have not. Yep, you keep him there to to recruit. Still a great defensive line coach, and I I truly think like what I believe like what Jared said. A lot of it had to do with the the coordinator scheme that was put in place and then trying to change it mid season. It was an impossible task for this entire defense to try to adjust. So I give Larry Johnson the benefit of the doubt as well, Jared. Uh, Stewart here uh, says here, day commented on McDonald being an NFL coordinator is day subpar when it comes to coordinating against an NFL coordinator. No, I, once again, I feel like your offensive line needs to actually block. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that the offense, the offense wasn't the problem here. Well, did this offense perform the way we expected or wanted the offensive offense to play in this game? No. Michigan also was able to completely shred the clock apart. So the offense didn't get the same number of opportunities as they normally would. I I don't. No, I, I don't think so. I think Day and Wilson are fine. I, I have no issue with Day or Wilson whatsoever. I That's all I got on that question, Kyle. Okay. Um, Ty Hines asks, "What was this a year to win it all with all the chaos and teams who are usually dominant not being so dominant? Uh, it um, is I, certainly panning out that way. Uh, Kyle, this probably should is. have been in the next episode, but um, yeah. Oh, in the, tw- the 28 spots, there have been seven playoffs to this point in the 28 spots. There have only been, uh, well, no, how, let me, it, let me, let me say this stat correctly for the 28 spots. 20 of those spots have been filled by four teams. Only eight playoff spots have been filled by a team that isn't Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma. That's it. The all of college football gets to split up those other eight spots. Crazy. Crazy. To and think that. what are we looking at right now? Oklahoma's out of the playoff. Ohio State's out of the playoff. Clemson's been out of the playoff since September. Uh, Bama has to beat Georgia to make the playoffs, and I don't think they will. Yeah. 
Agreed. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, who's your Buckeye? What early bold prediction do you have for the potential rematch with Oregon in the Rose Bowl? Now, I think that would only happen is if Oregon wins and if Michigan wins as well. That will only happen if those two cases happen. Now, if Iowa beats Michigan, Iowa is going to go to the Rose Bowl. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm honestly just not even there mentally yet. I'm just not even there mentally. If I'm yeah, being honest so I'm, with you. yeah, I don't, I don't want to answer that just yet, but, um, we have, we have a month. I, to I guess better question. That. Can Iowa beat Michigan? Maybe, but not the way Michigan played last weekend and the way that we've seen Iowa's offense here. I don't really. I really don't see Io really winning this but, game. But by the way, like I'm seeing a lot of in our own in the live chat right now, in our own Discord, on Twitter, elsewhere, a lot of posts starting with Ryan Day needs to blank. Ryan Day just lost his first ever Big Ten game as as a as as the coach at Ohio State. Just lost his first ever Big Ten game. And at the end of his third season, just lost his first ever Big Ten game. Now, if you want to say Ryan Day needs to make changes in his defensive coaching staff, he knows. You don't got to tell him that. He he knows. He wanted to make those changes months ago. He knows. You, he, he's aware of that. Anything else, he needs to stop calling plays. He needs to be tougher. He needs to do this. And he needs... Just lost his first ever Big Ten game in at the end of his third year as the coach at Ohio State. Stop telling Ryan Day what he needs to do. S the sky is not falling. I understand it feels that way. It feels like that way for me, too. But the last thing you want to do is make some knee-jerk reactions and screw up what is an excellent program over one loss. That's, mm -hmm. that's just stupid. That's yeah, just outright agreed. stupid. Ryan Day is doing just fine. I understand it so, because we're so in the wake of a Michigan loss. It doesn't feel like that. But you got to chill. Everyone's got to yeah. chill. Everything's yeah. fine. The program is fine. Yeah. Zach asks, is it time to rethink the entire defensive coaching staff for Ryan Day and move completely away from this Urban Meyer void? Uh, all the Urban Meyer guys are gone from the defensive coach. Defensive coaching staff, the day already fired all of them. You know, Greg Shiano's at Rutgers, right? Day hired Combs. Combs. Day hired Combs. Day hired everyone on the coaching staff except for Larry Johnson. Everyone on the defensive coaching staff. Did I say defensive coaching staff? If I didn't, I meant to. Everyone on the defensive coaching staff was hired by Ryan Day. He made some bad hires. You know what? Nick Saban's made bad hires. Urban Meyer made bad hires. Everyone makes bad hires from time to time. He's going to fix it. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. Michigan Bucknight. If you had your choice between Marcus Freeman or Chris Ash for the next defense, Defensive coordinator, who do you pick and why? Um, I'd go, I'd go Marcus, with Freeman. Marcus I, Freeman. I'd go with Freeman in heartbeat in a heartbeat. Yeah, I just, just I don't I feel like that's just too much of a a sideways move for Freeman. I feel like that's a guy who wants to be a head coach someday, and I feel like he sees it as like two years at Notre Dame than a head coaching job, and I, he probably feels like switching to Ohio State resets that clock for him. I feel I feel like Freeman would be a great fit if if Fickle went somewhere and then Freeman went to Cincinnati. I, guess, I, well, I could see I I could see like that working out, but it doesn't seem like Fickle is going anywhere anytime soon. Now speaking of Cincinnati, they have a defensive coach uh, with a familiar last name who I wouldn't mind uh, Ohio State taking a run at. His name is Mike Tressel for everyone playing at home. I think that's an interesting play for the defensive court as a defensive coordinator. He's experienced. He comes from the fickle tree. He comes from the. Yeah. Am, oh, am, me. Am I reaching? Ty, Ty, Ty can't hear me. 
Um, the <laughs> um, no, I think I think Mike Tressel is. I maybe he's not. It depends upon what their budget is. Because to me, you take Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes gets graduated to co-defensive coordinator, which is what he's been doing this year anyway. But you make it formal. Form. Did I say that right? And then you go and get a more experienced defensive coordinator to be the defensive coordinator over Matt Barnes. Uh, yeah, yeah, from the D'Antonio tree, from the yeah, absolutely. It, I think. I, I think that's absolutely where I would. I mean, there are some bigger names out there that maybe you pursue first, but it just sort of depends upon again how much money they're going to spend and who else is interested. I don't necessarily think that. I don't really think Mike Trussell is yep. maybe the first choice, but I think he's on the list. Yep, agreed. All right, Jared. I think that's enough for <laughs> for today here, Jared. We we gave our ratings. We we got our. Asked some, um, answered some questions from our fellow um, Sloop Cats in, in our in our Discord channel. Michigan Bucknut added a couple questions on, but I feel like we answered them, by the way. Uh, he said, uh, is Strud really that good of a line coach? I think we gave our thoughts on that. Is Al Washington on the hot seat? I think we answered that as well, yeah. Yep. Uh, Sunkard right, asked, what do we expect the Buckeyes' next game to be? Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe the Fiesta Bowl. Maybe the Rose Bowl. I don't know. I, I it, It's going to be New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah, I mean, this is where, like, Ohio State's fan base and television eyes and everything else comes into play. They'll, they'll be putting the best possible game allowed by the rules because of the money that Ohio State brings along with it. All right, Kyle, uh, that's it. Um, I mean, it's possible, Hoosier. Uh, that's it, Kyle. Um, everyone, uh, do whatever you want. I'm not I'm not your boss. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, something we missed at the top of the show here. I put at the very top, but we failed to talk about Jack Miller entering the um, transfer portal. Not to many surprise, we kind of, we kind of all expected this, especially especially towards the beginning of the year when Stroud um, got the nod, and more so after issues Jack Miller had in October too, and and here comes the official announcement from Jack Miller this Sunday um, afternoon evening that he's going to be entering the transfer portal. Um, maybe a call to USC, perhaps. Maybe. I I mean, I think it makes sense. I think he maybe heads back. You know, I, I don't necessarily know what USC has going for it quarterback wise. And if that fits into Riley's scheme or, you know, we we all know that uh, Riley's not afraid to, to to bring in a transfer quarterback. So, yeah, yeah I think no, that's absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Be, be, best of um, luck to him. Came in as Buckeye. We'll keep rooting for him just like. We did with all other Buckeyes who transfer out. We'll still root for him for success unless he play, plays against Ohio State. Then all that's off the table. But best of luck to Jack Miller. No, I'll, I'll still vote. I'm, I still will. No, Florida Buck. I still will root for uh, Jamarco Williams, even though he. Jamarco. Or, um, Jamarco. <laughs> sorry. That That's a name from the past right there. Jameson. Ooh. What's the matter, Kyle? You seem out of sorts. Did something bad happen yesterday? Yeah, just just end it. Just let's just end it, Jared. Okay, let's just end the damn show. <laughs> uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you by a uh, Columbus band. Um, Columbus, right? I'm a, I'm gonna check that real quick. Uh, do, do 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 do. Kyle, say something for me. Kyle, say something for me. Nope, Akron. They're from Akron. Um. From an Akron-based band called "If These Trees Could Talk," uh, it's a uh, it's an instrumental band. It's a post-rock band. So go ahead, hang on for that. Something chill for you, maybe. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is "If Trees Could Talk." <laughs>